So again, good morning. Uh, and for those of you on the East Coast, I got it wrong in my earlier comment. It is actually the afternoon already. Uh, and so good afternoon to you. And in case I don't see you later, good night. Um, my name is Richard Duffy. I am the Acumatica Product Evangelist and also the Vice President of Partner Enablement and Partner Strategy. And I'd like to welcome you to session number three, lecture number three uh, in the Acumatica Demo University series. So we are uh, going to be focusing on a couple of key topics in today's session. Fundamentally, we're still, oh, it looks like I've got a little bit of an echo there. I might just um, hit the mute all on everyone. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, so the um, with the focus for today's session is going to be uh, on demonstrating the Acumatica solution. And we're also going to focus a little bit on the importance of telling a story. And we are then going to have our very first presenter who has volunteered to um, take advantage of what is one of really the key uh, components of the Acumatica Demo University, which is giving you an opportunity to do a demonstration, to practice your demonstration skills and, uh, and get feedback from your peers on what they liked about your demonstrations uh, and maybe some constructive emphasis on the word constructive criticism uh, on, on what you could do. Now, of course, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, so as we're going through these things, what I'm going to ask you to try and do is I'm going to ask you to try and look at, look at the demonstration from the perspective of a prospect. A little, uh, little bit of a challenge probably for some of us. It's been a long time since we've been a prospect for um, an enterprise uh, resource planning solution, but I am going to ask you to do that. But more about that as we progress forwards. Okay. So with that, let me talk about our agenda in a little bit more detail. So those of you who are on last week's session will remember that we didn't quite get through all the components of, uh, of our demonstration. And last week's session, we focused on this idea of doing your initial, what I like to call the sex and sizzle um, demonstration, which is the demonstration that you do when you just want to introduce somebody to the Acumatica solution. You don't want to get into too much detail, but you want to give them a little bit of a taste for the power that's sitting there uh, behind Acumatica. Then I'm going to take you through uh, a new uh, component that I've, uh, I think it's important that we add to the demo university based on feedback um, that I got from our recent um, partner advisory board and i have introducing a section called Did You Know? Because I think there's a lot of things that potentially we're, we're, we're now doing at Acumatica that many of you as partners may not necessarily be aware of it. So I want to make sure that we do cover off on some of those things each week. Then we're going to get into the main con content for this week's session, uh, which is really around the importance of telling a story and the red thread and then just quickly touch on one more aspect of our positioning and messaging framework. And then we're going to get, as I promised, uh, our first demonstration from a student uh, here. And we're all students. I'm a student as well because I'm going to learn from you guys uh, as we go through these processes. I think we never stop learning. Certainly that's, uh, that's been my experience after 30 years of working in this industry. I think as soon as you stop learning, uh, you may as well pack up and go home and, and go and work in another industry because you'll quickly be left behind. But anyway, um, enough of my philosophy on life. And then I'm going to finish off by giving you a preview of next week's session. And the good news is we've got another student who's already put their hand up to do uh, a demonstration in next week's session. But we're going to then start moving on and start talking a little bit more about selling Acumatica into specific industries. Now, hope you don't mind, but um, when a question comes up, um, I'm going to make sure that, um, that I take a quick look at it and, and then I can address it. Now, somebody's asked, will there be um, an accessible recorded version of the lecture? Uh, and the short answer to that is yes. Every lecture is recorded and I post them up onto YouTube. All right, so that's probably a pretty good segue into the first thing that I'd like to talk about um, under the did you know um, topic. 
So, did you know that every week um, I am delivering on a Wednesday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time a introduction to Acumatica webinar? Well, if you didn't know, now you do. Uh, and how do you find out more about this and what's the purpose of it? Well, I'm just going to quickly toggle across and I'm going to go into the partner portal and show you where you can find the information um, about this. So I'll go to partner.acumatica.com and I'm going to log in. And what you'll see um, is you will see uh, on the front page of the Partner Portal, you will see the information here about the customer webinar recordings. So you'll see there um, exactly what I'm telling you about right now. Each week I host a customer webinar that provides a general overview of Acumatica. Now these are actually generic. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a potential customer, if you're a potential partner, a potential ISV, uh, we go through a, a general overview of the um, of the Acumatica solution, and I use our standard uh, presentation deck that I introduced to you last week as the uh, as the framework for that. Now every week is a little bit different because you know I don't I never work off a script. Um, I basically just uh, start the session up and we go wherever we like to go. But uh, as I'm going to explain to you uh, in a minute, uh, in the concept of the red thread, that I always make sure that we do keep roughly to a specific um, structure and a specific framework. But every week the demo is just a little bit different, keeps it interesting for me and also keeps it interesting for those people who are so starved for entertainment that they want to come along and, uh, and, and visit and watch that webinar every week. So every week you'll get it a little bit different. Just showing my age, uh, there's a band, an electronic music band called Tangerine Dream from Germany uh, and every concert they used to do um, obviously, it was a little bit different. Uh, they would uh, they would vary what they were playing. So you could potentially go to every single concert, and no two concerts were ever quite the same. Maybe a little bit like the Allman Brothers, who are quite famous for being a jam band. They would take one song, and every night they would you know turn one song into a a twenty or a thirty minute jam session. But anyway. Not that that's uh, not that that's what's going to happen in those demonstrations, but you can find all that information here on the partner portal. So if you're not looking at this on a regular basis, I would encourage you to please make sure that you do, um, at least on this home page, because this is where we're going to make sure that we um, provide the most up-to-date information about what's going on. So for example, if you want to invite your prospective customers to register, then um, the Acumatica events page is where you can find the, the, the links to that. And you can um, take that link, so for example, if they wanted to register for next week's, you could take this one, this link, and you can copy the link uh, and you can send it out to them. Or you can just click on the link there and there it is they can go in here and they can choose to register now. All right, and then of course when they choose register now, it'll take them into the registration page. All right, now very important, if you do invite a prospect along, uh, please make sure that they are registered in our CRM system. Okay, so that way I'm gonna go and take a look and see who came along uh, and see if they're already currently working with a partner. Now you don't need to worry, I don't, talk about any specific partners during these sessions. I do um, talk about the fact that our solution is sold 100% through partners and by partners. Um, and my call to action at the end of the session is always, <coughs> pardon me, um, it's always if you are working with a partner, you should now reach back out to that partner and engage them in a conversation. Um, so, you know, you can, you can feel free to send your prospective customers along to that to that session without fear of them. Um, sorry, I'm, <clears throat> I'm just going to go on mute for a second because I've got a frog in my throat. My apologies.
All right, that gets rid of the frog. Um, so, yeah, you can always make sure you can send them along without worrying about them going somewhere else. Now, a couple of other things. If you want to watch some of the recordings of the previous webinars that I've done, you can click here on Watch Webinar Recordings. Uh, and I know Charlie Horton was just um, editing this page a couple of minutes ago. So you'll see there's the introduction to Acumatica. I've also done an industry insight session on wholesale distribution, one on professional services, another one on managing data privacy and security in the age of cloud computing. So there's a whole range of these different webinars that, that every time we do one, they will be recorded and we will put them up here. And the thing to bear in mind is that you can use these yourself. All right, you can embed them into your, um, into your uh, web pages. You can use them as supporting materials in your marketing campaigns. And I am very, very happy to go ahead and record an intro and uh, a closing statement that positions these sessions on the basis of the, that they are being presented on behalf of your organization. And then in the call to action at the end, I will provide your company phone number and your company URL uh, as being the, the organization to contact when they want to take the next steps. Right. So one of the things I like to focus on and you should probably um, keep in mind as well is that it's important to be able to uh, repurpose any content that you do. So anytime you build some content, always think about how do I present this in a way that I can reuse it in other areas? Can I cut it into smaller pieces and use smaller pieces? Um, and you're going to see that. Uh, with something that I've done with the Demo University in the next week or two as an example of that. All right? So uh, if you missed any of the Demo University sessions, you'll also see that um, they're up here as well. So if you click on there, watch the Demo University recording now, what will you get? You'll see the previous sessions recordings are on here as well. So you can get them always from the partner portal because that's where we like to make sure everything is posted. But you can also just go onto my YouTube channel as well if you want and look at them directly there. But if you want to, for example, view last week's session, you'd click June 27 and there it is. There is the embedded YouTube uh, recording and any demo materials, um, and you can see there's a spelling mistake there, so I'll fix that up. But any of the demo materials, you would just click on there and it would make them available for you to download. All right, so hopefully that's clear. One other thing I'd like to cover for you in the did you know uh, is this. Did you know that there is a demo server which I am now running uh, for general consumption? So. Uh, if you have a prospect who says, I would like to just go and have a little bit of a poke around with the Acumatica solution, um, it's potentially a dangerous thing to do, um, but again, uh, you, you need to, my philosophy with this is I want to give you the flexibility, give you the choice, uh, and make sure that if you choose to give your prospects um, a view of a, of a live Acumatica, a demonstration data-based system that, that it's available for you. So uh, th this is up and running. Uh, it is at www.smecloudERP.com, which is a domain name that I own, uh, slash Acumatica. All right? And you'll see when you go to that page, it actually gives you the information about using the demo server. Log in using the username admin and the password is 123. A little bit of a disclaimer, I'm providing this personally. I have uh, uh, about seventy or $80,000 worth of servers sitting in the data center, a big industrial strength data center where Amazon are actually also hosting their servers um, in Sydney, Australia, because I haven't relocated those across to the US yet. Um, but they're sitting there uh, and they're available for you um, uh, to utilize. All right, so you can see here the data is refreshed every Sunday night at midnight and any data that's been added will be removed to bring the system back to a known state. All right, so that's there. Now, one of the other things I would point out to you, so for example, if I go ahead and I log on, I log on as admin and 123 is the password and I choose login. I keep an eye on this during the week as well to make sure that um, if anyone's gone in and perpetrated some evil deed, um, that they've totally trashed the dashboards, for example, or they've done, you know, something really hideous. So here's an example. Somebody's been um, playing around with the dashboards. 
all right, uh, and they've, um, they've misaligned it, then I can go back and I can fix it up. Um, or, of course, the beauty of this is, as you all know, with Acumatica, we do have the snapshot um, option. So all I need to do is go back here to Manage Companies, and then I'll just pick the snapshot, and then I'll restore the snapshot, and we're back to where we started. All right, but you can see it is a full working Acumatica system. Uh, it's fast. If it's not fast, then is a, probably a ch chance that you don't have a really good internet connection. All right, so uh, a number of people are using this right now, uh, and the feedback has been that it's 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 relatively quick, um, and it's a good example of showing people how fast the system is by telling them when they are using it that the server is sitting over in Australia. Now, if you would like your own database, your own company instance set up on here, I am more than happy to prepare that for you. As I said, um, there's actually two huge servers sitting there with a total of about 20 cores available uh, and about 512 gigabytes of RAM between the two machines. Um, so they're both running on virtualization platforms. One runs on vSphere, the other one on Hyper-V. So if you would like me to set up an instance for you, uh, I am more than happy to do that. And for example, I've just uh, done that for uh, Doug Hollenbach, who is working on uh, a pretty interesting program, which I'm not going to talk about because that would be a violation of our confidentiality. But he's working on a pretty interesting program, needed a demo environment. So uh, what did I do? I went and basically configured that demo environment for them. So same opportunity exists for you. And again, it's all part of the friendly service. So let me know if that's something that you want to take advantage of. All right. So that's the did you know. A little bit more time than what I was expecting to, to take to cover that. But uh, hopefully you found that of value. Um, all right. So let's then continue on with our, uh, with our schedule. Uh, what I wanted to do right now was complete last week's demonstration. And you'll recall that when we got to last week's demonstration, we got to the point where um, I was then talking about the fact that it was great to get data into the system, but one of the important things was how easy was it to get data out. So with that in mind, let's go back and I want to continue on with the demonstration. So I'm going to go back into role play mode right now. All right, so I'm going to pretend that, uh, that you are my standard audience that I have uh, at a demonstration, uh, and I'm just doing my demonstration. So what have we done? We've just completed looking through some of the functionality in the Acumatica system. I usually take people through a bit of a view of sales order entry. I use that as a guide for explaining to them the user interface and so on and so forth. Now, just bear in mind, you'll have an opportunity if you're coming along, and no doubt all of you are coming along to the Acumatica Partner Summit in Denver in August. If you sign up for the sales and pre-sales training in the three days, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday afterwards, we're going to spend a lot more time talking about some of these concepts, but, you know, this is, it's all linked together. What I'm explaining to you right now, we're going to go into in more detail in that training. But I've covered those basic areas, and then I will usually say something like this. Well, that's great. We've taken a look at how the Acumatica user interface works, and, and people tell us that it's really, really great to, to have a good system for getting data in, but the critical area is what can you do with it once it's in there? How can you turn that available data into insight? So a lot of it comes down to how you get that data out of the system. Now, many people uh, walk around with a sign above their head saying spreadsheets are my life. Uh, I certainly do that, and you might be a person like that as well. Uh, and so you want any data, as long as it's in an Excel spreadsheet format, you can get to it, and that's great. So we've got two aspects of the Acumatica solution which are going to make you very, very happy. The first one that I'd like to show you is what we call um, our export to Excel. So you'll recall earlier in our demonstration that what I did was I took you through a couple of specific examples of how you could get data out in our standard sales order entry area. For example, remember this was our work area, and then I could go across here and I could run my reports, and I could generate, for example, a sales order summary, 
with one click, I get my report across here. Remember, I said we could generate a template. And in this particular instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate that report again. And we're going to go right back. We'll go back to 2009. And then when I run my report, and we'll go back to January 2009. And then when I run my report, let me do that again. Always helps if you select the actual day. There we go, January 2009. Then when I run my report and I get all of my data, um, what I'm able to do is I'm able to push that report out into a PDF document, but I'm also able to go here and I'm able to choose to export that data out to Excel. So you can do that from any one of the reports. But then some of the other things that you're able to do is you're able to generate what we call generic inquiries. So here's one that I've created earlier in my best television chef uh, mode. And this is giving me a list of sales orders and quotes that are in the system. And you'll see, I can now simply go in here and I can click on the export to Excel button. And what the system's gonna do, it's gonna grab all that information and it's gonna export it out into an Excel spreadsheet. And because Acumatica, as we talked about before, is running in a web browser, you'll see it's just the same as opening up a standard Excel file in, in your web browser. It just asks you down the bottom here, do you want to open or save that document? So I'm going to say open. And then it's running a security scan because it's going to check that nothing has happened to that data or nothing malicious is, uh, is going on inside your Excel spreadsheet. And then it's going to open up that data for me on my local computer. Now, there's a couple of other things that, um, that I know people are very, very uh, focused on when they're thinking about using cloud-based systems, and that's security. And that's one of the reasons why you'll see we get a lot of warnings just to remind you of, um, the, you know, to, to bear in mind what's going on from a security perspective. So it's saying, be careful, um, files, um, you know, can can get tampered with and so on and so forth. But in this case, I'm going to say enable editing. All right, now, you'll recall earlier in my demonstration, I explained to you that Acumatica was built from the ground up uh, as an internet-enabled solution. That means that we use a technology called web services. And the idea behind web services is that you can connect from an external application through to the underlying Acumatica data using this thing called a web service. That's exactly what we've done when we create this Excel spreadsheet for you. We connect it to your Acumatica system using a web service. So not only do you have a snapshot in here of what the data is right now, if I choose enable content, what I can then do is I could save a copy of this spreadsheet onto my local machine and then all I have to do when I want to get a refreshed view of that, I don't have to go back into Acumatica and generate it again. I can just go here and click on my data tab and I can choose to refresh my data. And what the system will then do is it will go ahead and it will refresh that data for me. All right. So um, what it's going to do is it's going to create that web service link and then it's going to pull that data back for me. All right. So now that I've got my data, of course, in Excel, I can now start slicing and dicing it and doing whatever I want with it. So one of the questions that people often ask um, is they ask us, um, you know, can I um, modify these views? How do I change what I see? Can I build queries? Can I, can I structure my own inquiries um, into the system? And that's a great question. And the short answer, of course, is yes, you can. So I'm going to hit uh, don't save on that one. So remember I said here is this view called sales orders and quotes. Well, this is an example of, of one of those queries. Now, with Acumatica, we call them generic inquiries. And it's an example of how you can go ahead and you can start building your own inquiry screens, um, your own representations of the data, uh, without having to write any code yourself. So how do you do it? Well, all you need to do 
is you need to go across to system and you go here into customization. All right. Now, important point to note, I'm logged in right now, as you can see up here, I'm logged in as the administrator. So I have full access to do everything. Now, if you might not want other people in your organization to be able to do this. That's fine. You can lock them out. All right. So just bear that in mind. This is something that I can do because I am the administrator. So what do I do? I simply go here into generic inquiry and you'll see it allows me to build a generic inquiry um, from scratch. So let's take a look at the one that I built earlier and there you'll see it is, that's my sales orders and quotes. So it's very, very simple. Now I'm not going to give you a, this isn't going to be a lesson, I'm not teaching you how generic inquiries work, I just want to give you a quick overview. So if I go through this a little bit quickly, um, I do apologize, but remember, when you decide to purchase an Acumatica solution, your partner is going to take you through a detailed series of training sessions. So they're going to train you on how to use this functionality. Right now, I'm just demonstrating it. So there's a couple of things I can do. Well, I know that the sales orders and quotes information is going to pull information from my customer files and my sales order files. So I select those files. I then tell it, tell the system, how do those files join to one another? What's the field that's in both of those tables that provides the linkage? And that's this relations area. I then go and specify, well, what are the parameters? When I run this query, what do I want to be prompted for? How do I want to narrow it down? Do I want to put some additional conditions there on that? Okay. Do I want to group the data when it's created? Do I want to group it under certain areas and I, do I want to then perform some aggregation tasks? Do I want to sum it, generate averages, whatever the case may be? How do I want it sorted? And then when I'm looking at the results, what are the specific fields that I want to see in my results grid? So then once I've got that, I've got those results, um, this is how it's going to look. So just to show you one really, really quickly, when I go and I view this inquiry, one click, you'll see, there it is. That's exactly the inquiry that we were looking at before. All right. It's just generated it again on the fly. When I go back here and I go back into um, my generic inquiry and I want to go ahead and modify that again. And that it's looking like it's having a little bit of an issue there, but remember, what can I do? Again, quickly and easily, just go back here into generic inquiry. There it is. There's my generic inquiry. Um, what I can do in my results grid, I can just simply click here on the plus key, and then I can choose, well, what information do I also want to see? Maybe I want to see the customer's phone number, so that's going to come from the customer table, so I select that. And then I get a list of all the available fields in the customer table. And then I can go in here and I can find that particular piece of information that I'm looking for. You know, maybe I want to see um, who the owner is or I want to see um, some other information as well. So I can go ahead and I can choose that. All right. So I can go in here and I can say I want to see, for example, whether or not... Um, uh, let's take an example. I want to see who it was created by, just as an example. So I select that. I then hit the Save button, and that generic inquiry is now updated. All right, so that additional field, when I view my inquiry, that additional field is now there, and you can see I've now got this additional field here which is the created by. And anywhere where it's underlined, that means with one click I can drill down to that underlying information. So if I look at this sales order, again, one click, and it will open up that sales order for me, and there it is. Um, there's that sales order available for me to look at. So that's generic inquiries, and you can pretty much build any kind of inquiry that you want. You're only limited by your imagination. Okay, and that's one of the things when we talk about Acumatica, we talk about the fact that it helps you take control of your business, um, it helps you um, empower your people, 
and it helps you play to your strengths. Well, this is really what this functionality is about. It's about helping you to empower your people, give them the ability to get the data they need to do their jobs, and playing to your strengths. This is a classic example of how you can customize the solution so that you can do um, what you need to do effectively and easily. So that's the generic inquiries, and that's our export to Excel functionality. One last thing I did want to show you. Remember earlier in our demonstration, I introduced you to the fact that this is what we call a site map. So I'm able to take that generic inquiry, and I'm able to take it, and I can publish it anywhere onto the site map that I want. So right now, I've published that generic inquiry here onto my sales orders and quotes. But what I can do is I can go ahead and change where I want that to be, um, where I want that to be published to. So if I go here into my customization again, I look at my generic inquiry, and there it is. I can simply go here and I can tell it, you know what? I actually want to put that on my forms area in my reports tab of the uh, of the site map. All right, so I can go here and I can select that. That's now going to be pointed to the forms, and I can call this a different name. I can call it Quick Sales Order view. So you might, for example, in your business, you might have a previous screen that people really liked um, that gave them that quick sales order view. Well, you can duplicate it using generic inquiries, even give it the same name, and then when I hit save, now what's going to happen when I go into distribution, okay, I go into sales orders, I go into my reports and forms, there it is, I've now got my quick sales order view, and one click it goes ahead and it generates that quick sales order view for me. All right? So hopefully you found that um, a good overview of how that functionality works. It's quick, it's easy, and remember, I wrote no code at all. So this is something that with your partner's um, training that they will do for you during the implementation, you'll be able to use it very, very quickly and easily. Okay? So that's it. That's, I'm now moving out of role play mode. That's how I would demonstrate that particular functionality. All right, so they are, if you combine what I showed you last week together with that, those are the key things that I would show in a sex and sizzle demonstration. All right, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to pause for a second and I'm going to check to see if we do have any Q&A before I move on to our next section. And it looks like right now, nope, there is no Q&A, so that's good. Um, again, well, actually, there is a question. One second, let me just open this up, and I will answer this question right now. So, any problem in using Office 365 on the export and imports? No problem at all. As a matter of fact, one of the, the things that I'm building at the moment is a quick example of how you can go end-to-end -end through utilizing the um, Office 365 application uh, or the applications and, and showing people how quickly and easily you can integrate those two things together. So stay tuned for that one. Probably going to take me about another two weeks before I get that completed. Um, and Word as well. Uh, you can certainly integrate into uh, your data into Microsoft Word. Now, there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Obviously, um, you know, this functionality, pushing it out to Excel um, is, you know, I mean, it, it generates an Excel file that's specifically designed for that, but you can link data from Microsoft Word straight into, uh, into Acumatica. And again, you can use web services. Um, if you have SQL access into the database, you can use that method as well. Uh, but again, it, it's really a, a matter of how, uh, of how you want to work with it. Okay, so good questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to ask those. So let's then toggle back across and let's go back into our agenda. So one of the things that I wanted to cover off on um, is how important it is to make sure that as you're doing your demonstration that you do tell a story. 
uh, and that you follow what I like to refer to as the red thread. So let's talk about that for a second. One of the things that if you've ever done demonstrating to win training or you've ever read the book demonstrating to win, uh, and this is something we'll go in again, as I said, in more detail in the, uh, in the sales and pre-sales training at the summit. There, there's two components of the brain that you need to bear in mind when you're demonstrating. So think about your audience, all right? Everybody in your audience hopefully has a brain. Uh, the, there's three, there's three parts of the brain that you really want to be aware of. There's the reptilian brain. The reptilian brain is what we call instinct. That's the part of the brain which just acts without thinking. We really have no control over the reptilian brain. All right. We don't give it any thought during our demonstrations. The two parts of the brain that we're interested in are called the limbic system and the neocortex. So, the limbic system is the part of the brain that pays attention to things, all right? So have you ever been in a meeting or have been having a conversation with somebody and they've got one of those pens that clicks and for whatever reason, be it a nervous habit or whatever, they're sitting there and they're clicking the pen. So you're trying to talk to them, you're trying to listen to what they're saying or worse, you're in a meeting trying to listen to what somebody else is saying and the person next to you is sitting there clicking clicking their pen or they're fidgeting or they're tapping or they're wiggling their foot or whatever the case may be. The part of your brain that pays, that, 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 that pays attention to that is the limbic system. Now, the limbic system doesn't care whether the thing that's distracting its attention is good or bad, right? It's got no way of telling. That's why the person clicking the pen drives you mad. Your brain will focus on it but you can't stop it from doing that. So you need to make sure that during a presentation, you're providing the limbic system of your audience's brains with things that are interesting to them, right? So stories, telling stories um, are very, very good for keeping the limbic system engaged, okay? So if you can, link your demonstration to a story, then you will have a better chance of keeping people's focus, all right? Now, so that's the limbic system. It's the part of the brain that pays attention. But importantly, you don't just want them to pay attention, but you want them to remember what it is that you've told them. The part of the brain that does that is called the neocortex, all right? Now, the neocortex will only remember things that are important to that person, all right? If they don't care about it, they're not going to remember it, right? This is where why you might be in a, at a party um, and you get somebody that um, is telling you what they think is the most interesting um, thing about, you know, mobile phone technology, um, and you're sitting there listening to it going, oh, I have absolutely no interest in this. <clears throat> you're being polite, um, but you're just not going to remember, remember anything they told you. Why? Because you're just not interested. So you need to make sure that you're covering things which are interesting to your audience, all right? Otherwise, they won't remember it. So the idea behind this is that you, you tell a story and you break your story up into usable bites. Anybody who's ever seen a James Bond film will know, or an action film of any kind, will know that this is what they do, all right? They break the story up into chunks. And have you ever been in a movie and you're sitting there going, wow, this is really dragging? Well, it's usually because they've given you too big a chunk before they realize that they've got to engage your limbic system again. So in a James Bond film, what do they do? They blow something up, they have a car chase, then it slows down, they explain, you know, what's going on that, that got to that point. Then just when you're about to start drifting away, they'll blow something up, they'll have another car chase or, or something like that. And then they explain to you a bit more. And then when they get right to the end of the film, they blow everything up. Okay, it finishes with a huge bang. So a big bang to get you engaged and a big bang just before you leave the theater. So you walk out going, wow, that was really cool. Or if that's not the kind of film you like, maybe you might walk out going, oh, 
I was so bored. But anyway, the the way the filmmaker has built the story um, will certainly keep your brain engaged. You might not feel satisfied at the end of it, but you'll certainly be engaged. So you can use the same process in your demonstrations. And we're going to talk more about that uh, as we progress and, and, and in August at the, uh, at the training. And we call that the movie view of a demo. You break your demo up into small bite-sized chunks. But the idea of telling a story is it keeps focus. It provides a logical flow for your demonstration. Hopefully you now see it aligns to the way that your brain works with the limbic system and the, um, and the neocortex. It stops you from missing key steps that you wanted to, to cover off on. Um, it allows business theatre, it allows you to use props, all right, and more about business theatre in our additional training. It makes you look professional, it builds confidence in the mind of your prospect because they see you do have a structured approach to the way that you're presenting, and then of course not only does that build confidence, but then that also builds trust, okay? So hopefully um, what I've just told you makes sense, and with that, what we're going to do now is I am going to introduce you to our guest presenter. And our guest presenter today is Graham Martin from uh, a UK partner called KISS. Okay, and as you can see there, that's KISS, a UK partner, not the band KISS. So um, it's Graham Martin presenting, not, uh, not Gene Simmons or, or anything like that. So bear with me for a second because what I'm going to do is hopefully Graham is there on the line. And let me just check my list of people. Yes, he's there. So what I'm going to do, Graham, is right now I'm going to make you the presenter. All right. So with that, Graham gets to take over and he is going to show us um, his screen. So I'm going to stop showing my screen as soon as he's taken over as presenter. So bear with us for a second just as we go through some of these logistics. All right, there we go. Graham is now the presenter. And Graham, I am now also going to unmute your audio. So stay tuned just for a second. Where's he gone? All right. Well, I can see he's now the presenter. All right, Graham, you may, may need to make sure you unmute yourself through the, um, through the GoToMeeting control panel. So if you just quickly dive down into the GoToMeeting control panel. Okay. Looks like we're having a minor challenge there with that. Just down on the task bar, uh, Graham, you'll see the little blue asterisk kind of icon. I saw the problem. The problem is actually on my end. I am just going to quickly, uh, oh, the reason why I couldn't find you before, sorry, um, Graham, was that uh, you then went into the staff area. So I am going to unmute you. And now, all things being equal, we can hear you. Good evening, everybody, or it is evening for me over here. Um, is that too loud to...? It's perfect. That's fine. Um, actually, having uh, met Richard once before, and he's uh, obviously met me, that's probably why he left me on mute. <laughs> I'm, not that, um, I'm not that bad. Come on. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, can everybody see my um, slideshow screen? Can they see a PowerPoint yes. up ready to run? Yep, we can see you're, you're actually in, uh, still in design mode on your PowerPoint as well, so I'm not sure. That's if, fine. Okay, yeah. so I'm... Um, I'm an actual uh, a, a go-to webinar virgin. I will completely admit that. Um, so be be gentle with me. And what I'd like to do this uh, 
particular demonstration is something that uh, I intend for an audience of people that have not, um, they've not heard of Acumatica before. It's a 10 minute presentation like a business breakfast type meeting. Um, so uh, without further ado, if you're all happy with this, I'll, uh, I'll begin and then you can uh, take it to pieces, tell me what's good, tell me what's bad. Um, but if you can bear in mind, it's to a, a general audience of um, mixed ability uh, persons that have attended a um, breakfast meeting on the guest speaker. That's clear. Okay. Away you go. Right then. Hopefully, we will get the slide running. Um, okay, my name's Graham Martin. I work for KISS UK in the uh, uh, Limited, and I'm here to tell you about something called Acumatica and why I consider it to be vital to this new buzzword the industry has been um, banding around that you may have heard called the cloud. I don't know how much you know about the cloud, but hopefully you'll know a little bit more about it in a bit. I wrote my first program 40 years ago on ticker tape, which makes me about six years younger than Apple and Microsoft. This product is more flexible, accessible, and affordable than anything I've seen since then. Its principle was, as we saw, work anywhere, on anything, and involve everybody. Now there's 4.9 million businesses in the UK and out of that 95% have 1 to 20 employees. So they're small businesses. 98% are 1 to 5 employees. We're a nation of shopkeepers and gardeners evidently and we do stop for afternoon tea occasionally. These smaller businesses require the same basic tools as large enterprises. However, they don't usually have the same resources. They haven't got the same amount of money, people or time. And as a business, we specialized in analyzing the tools large companies use, scale them down, bring them financially into and functionally into reach. Moving away from computers, get real a minute. You're amazing and computers are not. You'll see the relevance of this piece in a second, hopefully. Because you have got subsystems built in for vision, sound, taste, touch, smell. You're an end-to-end -end platform for life. You take all of that data and you use it to follow three simple basic drivers. You seek pleasure, you avoid pain, and you spend as little energy doing the above two as you possibly can. If systems, IT or otherwise, aren't on the same platform, there's work involved in integrating them. That often leads to pain. And after working in computers for a lifetime, I just don't understand. I truly fail to understand why that's so. And let me tell you why. In computers, data is the core. It's the digital ink, and digital data is very simple. It's ones and noughts. It's ons and offs. Anybody um, suggest something else that's simple? There's a clue on the screen. Absolutely. Bricks are simple. Bricks can be used to build anything from a garden wall to a cathedral. But you need a common platform. You need to work to a plane, or you create incompatibilities. Things look out of place. Your office premises ends up looking like a building site. Digital ink as a concept, digital ink, this flow of simple digital data, has not yet been realized in all the years that I've been working with IT. Even something known as the Enoto Pen, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, this product, but commercially available from 2003, even that missed it. And that's, although it's just an input device, that actually generates real digital ink. So a little camera at the bottom takes pictures of dots under your pen nib and programmers add intelligence to it. So um, we don't have, as I keep stating, a platform available to provide a real flow for this data. Back in the 70s when I first started work, late 70s and the 80s, we had character-based computers. Then that let us do one job at a time. It, we moved up to Windows-based systems, client-server machines that let us do more than one job at a time. Then into the noughties, we had the web, which lets us push data out across a global network, but it's still not digital ink. Now we've got the cloud and something that creates a platform to integrate, to bridge data islands, and to let this digital link flow at last. That platform, the only platform built from the ground up to do that, as far as we've found, and out of the box, it will give you almost every tool you need to run your business professionally. It lets you concentrate on your business, 
despite increasing requirements for compliance and governance. Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, pretty famous in the world of IT, you've probably heard of them as well. Arguably they created the personal computer market, but they have very different approaches. The quality of the Apple product stems from its end-to-end -end approach. The platform, from handling the box to using what's in it, is a pleasure. Bill Gates opened things up to third parties, giving us faster, wider take-up of personal computing platforms, but at a cost. The majority of business applications, most of the ones that you run, run on Microsoft software. But that's created and helped promote data islands. Acumatica helps marry these two differing ide ideologies back together. And the future is not tomorrow, remember, it's now. And now, and it's now. It's, it's always inexorably drawing us forward, inevitably drawing us forward. The advent and use of the internet has changed business fundamentally. You've all experienced it, whether you wanted to be involved with it or not. It's come along, it's taken you into places mainly that you wanted to go, but in some cases, places you didn't want to go. I'll give you an example. Regeneration of our high streets. We've lost a huge amount of business to online trade, and the business is supporting the high street. We've got to help rebuild those. Uh, I was at a regeneration conference a couple of weeks ago just talking about this. And what we've got to do in that instance is we've got to make shopping an event for our customers. We've got to make it different. We've got to express our unique identities. As Jobs what have said, Steve Jobs from Apple learnt and said again, you do judge a book by its cover. So we need to be able to make that cover personal. We need to make it express core values to say what you are. Acumatica is not only the first system that naturally integrates data and gives us digital link and digital flow of that data. It lets us become much, much more efficient than we've been able to before. It's the first system that lets you easily make business tools running your unique business look unique, extending them out to everyone you interact with and carrying your brand everywhere whilst working to well-defined standards actually doing that business. It does the job still. Acumatica, for me, is as fundamental a game changer for business as writing was 6,000 years ago, paper 4,000 years ago, the phone 100 years ago, and computers 50. It isn't tomorrow. It's right here. It's right now. And I'm going to ask you if you've enjoyed what I've been talking about, if it's helped you understand a bit more about what the cloud's about and this particular product, I want two hours. That's 0 0.12, 0 0.012 of your week or not, 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 not to of a year. And if you give me those two hours, I'll show you how to get on board with this product, how it will become faster, cheaper, more flexible, and more accessible for you. Thank you very much for listening. If you want to get in contact with us, phone us or email acumatica at kiss-uk.com today. That's it. That's the demonstration. Perfect. I can do my now. All right. Stop sharing my screen, yeah? Um, no, leave your screen there if you wouldn't mind. So, again, Absolutely. I'm going to give you a round of applause. Um, first of all, for being uh, the first person to volunteer to do this, but secondly, for doing a fantastic job. So, um, now what we're going to do is I am going to open up our, um, our Q&A panel. And what I'm going to do is I am going to ask um, our uh, attendees that if you've got some feedback, um, if you could uh, just um, pop up in the Q&A panel and let me know that you would like to give um, Graham some feedback on his presentation. But what I'm going to do, I've got some feedback for you, Graham. I hope you don't mind. Um, I'm going to give everybody an example of how I find is a great way to give feedback. So the way I like to do it is to talk about what I liked first and then to, to talk about what some of the things are that, that, that I might do a little bit differently. So first, uh, first thing that I would say, what I really liked was the fact that you used those numbers and statistics really, really early. And, and it was a great example of the fact um, that that, that, that numbers and statistics are very limbic. As soon as people start bringing up specific numbers and talking about specific statistics, your brain has no choice but to start to pay attention. All right? 
So you want to make sure that, that you're getting that. So I really, really like that. Uh, I also like the fact that you, you, that you told a story, right? That you, you used that example uh, and you built it in a structured way. You talked about bricks, right? And you used bricks as the example. That um, that with bricks you can make anything. You can you know you can make a house or you can make a cathedral. So I really like that approach. Um, I got a little bit confused when you started talking about connecting the platform and then drawing a comparison between um, the bricks and, and and then Acumatica and and the internet as a platform. Um, I felt that maybe that could have been a little bit more specific, um, but um, you know, I, 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 you know, overall, I really like that stuff. I'm going to sound like one of the judges from um, UK's Got Talent, don't I? Um, <laughs> so, uh, the, one of the other things, just on your first few slides, can you just quickly jump your slides back to right, right at the start? So if you just hit home, the home key should take you should take you back to the start when you're in slideshow mode as well. By the way, I don't know. Slideshow mode. Okay, sorry. Yep. So put it into slideshow mode again. Yep. Okay. Now, did you do you have rehearsed timings? Like, do you have automatic? Um, yeah. Okay. I found that really, really a bit too quick. So, so do you click so you go to the first slide? Yeah, okay. That, um, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I was practicing those timings when I got back from the... Um, yeah. The, the I, I had to go to earlier yeah. today, so I'm... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, no. it, that showed that they were bad, they were wrong. Yeah, no problem. I have a tendency um, not to use automated timings in slide decks because they can really break up your flow because what you were talking about was really interesting to me and I wanted to, f I wanted to try and focus on both. I wanted to listen to what you were saying but I also wanted to see what was going on on the screen and, and my limbic system got a little bit distracted by the fact that whilst you were talking about something, the slides, it was almost like the slides were continuing on independently of what you were saying so that threw me off. Okay. Okay. So, you know, just a best practice that I've found to be useful is never to use pre-recorded um, slide timings. Some people like to do them because they think they're going to keep them on time, but with um, with uh, PowerPoint these days, you can put it into slideshow mode where it on once if you've got two screens, the projector shows the slides, and then on your laptop. Um, you actually get to see a timer and what's the previous slide and what's the next slide and all that kind of thing. So, again, I would encourage you to get familiar with that uh, with that process. Are you aware of how to do that, um, Graham? Have you seen that? Yeah, I am. I've, I've um, the the problem. Well, it's the problem. This is this is a classic case of not actually having got a completed demo before I showed it to an audience. No, that's um, fine. That's fine. I'm Just yeah, I, I, the place I was trying to use the automatic timings was the bricks because I wanted them to fill the screen while I was talking. Yep. Um, and unfortunately, I put some forwarding timings on slides that shouldn't have had them. No, that's fine. Well, that good. Thank you for demonstrating where things can go wrong if you don't spend enough time on your preparation. So that's that's yep. fine. Um, I'm not going to mark you down on anything for that. Um, and the one the other thing that I really did like was the way that you talked about the future, um, and, and the way that you talked about Acumatica and 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 you know that the future is here today and you need to do something about it. I would, if before I was going to give you two hours of my time, I'd probably want a little bit more, um, a little bit more of a of an understanding of what the value is that I'm going to get. Okay, from that two hours, I understand the the premise. I understand the premise of your argument, but um, if I'm going to give you two hours of my time, I would say um, what would really help me is if you said at the end of that two hours, you are going to have the following things. You're going to have this, 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 and this. All right, 
then I'd be more likely to give you my two hours because I know what the concrete deliverables are off the back end. So you, you, it was a really great um, thing to get my get my attention engaged. But the only thing that I would add at the end is, you know, if you're asking for two hours of my time, what are you going to give me in return specifically? Okay. I didn't give them the deliverable. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. What's What's the benefit? Okay. What's the benefit of giving you two hours? All right. Okay. And let's see. Does anybody else have any feedback for Graham? And it looks like everyone's absolutely up. Oh, a hand's gone up. Great. So uh, Cliff Hall has some feedback. So what I'm going to do, Cliff, is I am going to unmute you. Um, so give me one second and I'm going to unmute you. So Cliff, you can now give uh, Graham your feedback. Good afternoon or good evening, Graham. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you, Cliff. I wanted to say I really love the energy and enthusiasm because that, I think, hits the, uh, the old brain as well. It really keeps people paying attention with that. Um, the other thing I liked was the ideas that you created, and while it didn't go off as well as you had wanted right off the bat, with a little practice it will, the flow was nice. I enjoyed that part of it. It kept me like almost wanting to buy popcorn. The only <laughs> thing I might like me, I speak a lot faster, and I have to modulate that when I do my demonstrations or speak in front of people. You might want to slow that down a little bit. All in all, I thought it was enticing and, and darn good. Can I ask the group generally, um, bearing in mind the 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 uh, original remit was it's meant to be quite short and quite snappy, time-wise. I know I've missed a few things out, and I know I missed uh, I've m messed up the um, the the slides that should have been automatic. The slides I should have been moving along uh, by hand. Um, but how did you feel about the time? If you were sat, you you. You've got an hour's breakfast meeting. Uh, you've got to go and get on with the rest of your day. You're there with some colleagues, and I'm a guest speaker that's been invited in to talk about something you're um, hopefully interested in. Um, did I spend too long, too short? Um, yeah, what's the general feel? Was that okay? All right. So if you've got uh, if you've got an answer to that, feel free to pop it into the chat. But I, um, Cliff, do you uh, do you, seeing as how you're still unmuted, do you want to give your feedback? Yeah, I was just going to type that, but I didn't know I was still unmuted. I thought the timing was appropriate for things like breakfast and things of that nature, because you don't have a lot of time, and yeah. it kind of depends on where you are in the bucket. If they put you at the end, you don't get a lot of time. So I thought the timing was right. Maybe five minutes longer would have been appropriate. Which would have given me a bit more opportunity to talk about a few more of the benefits of, of taking this two hours from me. Right. And maybe add the one piece where, you you know, what's in it for them. In other words, what, you said what you're going to take away, as, as Richard pointed out, maybe a little bit more of that so they walk home going, gosh, I really want to talk to this guy because I'm having this pain that he's going to solve. If there's a way to do that. Okay, yeah. that makes sense, and I did wonder if there wasn't enough of that in there. Yep, um, yep, and I, wasn't. I think that's perfect. I'm going to put you back on mute now, Cliff, um, so please don't be offended. I'm just letting you know. Um, so then... I, I would absolutely agree with what um, with what Cliff uh, with what Cliff said there. You know, again, particularly um, because their time is precious, and and you've been given given this. Um, I would open up with a little bit of a you know uh, a value statement. All right. One of the things that we teach in our pre sales methodology is a technique called tell show tell. Tell them what they're going to see show them, then tell them what they saw, all right? Um, yeah. So if you start off with a business benefit, just make sure you don't de degenerate down into hyperbole where you overpromise. You say, I'm going to give you in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to show you three things that are going to absolutely revolutionize your world, um, and then you don't deliver. So it's well, always, always a bit of a challenge, I think, to find the right balance. But as Cliff said, Practice, and as you already acknowledged, so no one's marking you down for it. Practice, practice, practice. Um, you'll get that flow going. The more you do the presentation, um, the better. Do it, do it to yourself. 
you know, do, do the presentation with nobody in the room. Get yourself a copy of Camtasia. Record the presentation. You know, if you want to, if you want to do it again and you want me to sit in and listen into the presentation. And the same thing goes for everybody else who's on, on the call. I'm more than happy to do that. You want to talk to your channel manager, ask them to, to be an audience for you. Um, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to do that as well. So with that, I would like to again uh, Graham, say thank you to you for uh, for going first. Um, I'm going to wrap up now, but before I do, one of the things that I do want to tell you is there's a change coming to the way that these um, sessions are scheduled. One of the pieces of feedback we've had from a few folks is they didn't realize that they had to go and register for each individual week. All right, so we're going to change that mechanism. We're going to, um, A, I'm moving the platform. I'm moving from GoToWebinar across to GoToTraining. So nothing that you guys will see, but certainly something that's going to be better for, for Acumatica in terms of the platform that we use for delivering this thing. By going to GoToTraining, we can, you know, um, schedule things like, you know, uh, pre-prepare polls, questionnaires, use it to play back little snippets of video, things like that that aren't necessarily so easy in the standard go-to webinar. So you should stand by to receive from me sometime in the next um, day or two an updated invitation email inviting you to participate in these sessions um, with uh, Outlook calendar link which will work in either Outlook or it'll work in um, iCal if you're using a Mac or whatever. Um, and, and that will have a new link for you that will set this up as a recurring meeting in your calendar. And then each time you join, just before you join, it's going to ask you to tell us who you are rather than actually having to pre-register. All right. So hopefully that's going to make this process a little bit easier. Um, and with that, uh, I will again say thank you to Graham and thank you to all of you for joining us for today's lecture. Next week, we are going to be talking about industries. And what we're going to do is I'm going to start introducing you to some of the ways that, um, that I collect industry information, where I go to get it, and how I present it. So if you do get a chance, I would love it if you could take a look at the um, the industry webinar that I've done on wholesale and distribution, because that's going to be the example that I'm going to use, uh, and I'm going to explain to you how I put that together, and then I'm going to share some of that feedback with you, and I'm going to share some resources that will help you talk more about the industry and use some up-to-date uh, uh, research uh, and information that will help you position yourself as an industry expert. And we're going to start off with wholesale and distribution, but over time we're going to cover a whole range of different industries. So if you've got feedback on a particular industry that you would like me to cover, let me know. I'll be more than happy to do that. So with that, I would say thank you to you for joining us today. I hope you found today to be of use. Feedback is important, and I'd love to get your feedback. We are going to start sending you out uh, short feedback surveys after each one of these, so you can tell us if we hit the mark or if I waffled on too much or you found it not of value or whatever the case may be. So when you get that, please take 30 seconds uh, or a little bit longer if you feel so inclined to provide us some feedback. And I'll look forward to talking with you same time next week, next Friday, uh, and we're going to focus on um, presenting from an industry perspective. So with that, I would say thank you and enjoy the rest of your day, or for, for you, Graham, enjoy the rest of your night, uh, and, uh, and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.